Time to travel, travel and cruise tips. Cradle Mountain is located in the Lake St. Clair National Park, which is part of the World Heritage listed Tasmanian Wilderness Area. It offers many world-class hiking trails and unique wildlife experiences. The dramatic serrated peaks, glacial carved lakes and unique grasslands have certainly exceeded our expectations. Cradle Mountain is a one hour 45 drive west of Launceston, one and a half hour drive from Devonport or a four hour drive northwest of Hobart. You cannot drive within Cradle Mountain National Park during the bus shuttle hours. This is because the road is very narrow and the buses communicate on radio to ensure that only one bus is traveling over a section of road at any one time, otherwise they're not able to pass each other. The shuttle buses are the best way to explore. You can catch a shuttle bus from the visitor center at Cradle Mountain. Buses depart every 15 minutes from 8 a.m. seven days a week. There is also a cafe available at the visitor center and a large car park is nearby. To visit the Cradle Mountain, you must hold a valid Tasmanian National Park Pass. You can get it at the Visitor Centre. Most people spend two nights at Cradle Mountain, which will give you enough time to explore the highlights of the area. If you would like to fully experience this wonderful location, you might want to stay for a week. We stayed for two nights, did the Dove Lake Circuit, visited Wombat Pool, Lake Lilla, the Crater Lake and Marion's Lookout and did some more short walks near the Discovery Park's Cradle Mountain, which is where we stayed. I'm short of words to express the beauty of this wonderful place. The Cradle Mountain peaks look so majestic and magnificent. One key thing to remember when visiting Cradle Mountain is the weather here can change quickly. So make sure you pack warm clothing, no matter how nice the weather looks when you start hiking. We were there in mid-December and were lucky nice and sunny weather prevailed. Both days were about 14 to 15 degrees Celsius maximum and close to zero at night. But on the first morning, there was a very chilly wind. We did the most popular walk at Cradle Mountain, the Dove Lake Circuit on our first full day there. It is a moderately easy six kilometer track. On average, people complete it in two hours. The shuttle bus takes you from the visitor center to Dove Lake Car Park, right where the trail starts. It takes about 15 minutes to drive on the bus. The Dove Lake car park is the last stop. There are several other stops along the way where you can get off to access other walking trails. We left early in the morning. It was freezing when we got off the bus with a strong wind blowing. But a while later, the wind dropped and it turned out to be a beautiful sunny day. As the name suggests, the trail goes around Dove Lake. It was a very pleasant walk. You can view the beautiful Cradle Mountain peaks from various angles and admire the beauty of Dove Lake at the same time. If you're really lucky, you might get the mirror reflection on the lake. Everyone who has been to Dove Lake would remember the boat shed. This often photographed boat shed that stands on the northwestern shores of Dove Lake was built in 1940 by the first ranger at Cradle Mountain, Lionel Connell. Boating was popular on the lake until the 1960s. The shed was built largely of King Billy Pine. It is rare and native to Tasmania and can be found throughout the Cradle Mountain Lake St. Clair National Park. Although the boat shed is now no longer in use, it has become a unique feature and part of the Dove Lake. After lunch, we decided to get on the Crater Lake Circuit Trail to visit Lake Lilla and Wombat Pool. There are some up and down climbing, but it was reasonably easy to take this walk. Such a beautiful setting and a great place to rest during your hike. From Wombat Pool, you can keep going to complete the Crater Lake Circuit, which involves some steep climbing. We decided to save it for the next day. On the second day, we climbed to the Marion's Lookout. There are three main routes to Marion's Lookout via the overland track past Crater Lake, from Dove Lake past Wombat Pool, or the steep direct ascent from Dove Lake Circuit. The standard route goes past Crater Lake and Wombat Pool and can be done in either direction. Given we had already been to the Dove Lake and Wombat Pool, we decided to get off the bus at Ronnie's Creek to walk along the overland track. This track continues all the way down to St. Lake Clare. 
about 65 kilometres in total. Ronnie's Creek his stop is the one before Dove Lake car park. The track started with a gentle climb from Ronnie's Creek, then it became steeper when we entered the rainforest. It was a nice and pleasant walk, going through the rainforest and passing the crater falls. The track keeps climbing up. Not long after, we were out of the rainforest, you were greeted by the beauty of the crater lake. Following the track and keep climbing up for 15 minutes or so, we were rewarded by the stunning views of Dove Lake, Crater Lake and Lake Lilla in the distance. Crater Lake was of course the closest and looked the most beautiful with its deep blue colour. Despite its name, this lake is in fact not a crater, but rather carved by glaciers. From here, it is the final ascent to the Marion's Lookout. This part is the steepest, but don't worry, there is a metal chain to help you climb. In the rain and snow, which is common in the area, please take extra care as the track can get quite slippery. At the top of Marion's Lookout, we met a guy who told us that this was his seventh time to Cradle Mountain and the first time having a sunny day. This made us realise just how lucky we were to have such a beautiful day to take in the scenery. It was almost lunchtime when we reached Marion's Lookout. Having lunch while enjoying a bird's eye view of the Dove Lake and admiring the beautiful peaks of Cradle Mountain was such a reward. Going back instead of the most popular route, going past the Wombat Pool and Lake Lilla to finish it at Dove Lake, we decided to do something different based on the advice of that guy we met. We chose to get on to the horse track to finish at where we started, Ronnie's Creek. It is a much longer track but apparently has a more gentle descent, although I'm not quite so sure about that. After lunch, we started walking along the overland track towards Cradle Mountain to get on the horse track. It took us around 20 minutes to finally get on the horse track. We were glad we got to choose that route. We got to view Cradle Mountain more closely and we also saw Barn Bluff in the distance, a smaller mountain just hiding behind Cradle Mountain. When we reached horse track, the famous Cradle Mountain kitchen hut was only 10 minutes away. We turned right to get on the horse track, heading back to Ronnie's Creek. The track is very well maintained and it is a 2.5 hour hike. There are less people on horse track. I certainly felt it is a lot more remote and a better opportunity to see the rustic but beautiful landscape and wilderness. You will pass Crater Peak on the way, which is a five minute detour and you can view Crater Lake from another angle. Cradle Mountain not only offers splendid views, there is also much wildlife here. More about that later. But for now, let me share with you some other walks with you. There are short and easy walks you can do at the Cradle Mountain. None of them would disappoint you. The Pencil Pine Falls is just a 10 minute short walk from Pepper's Lodge, which is not far from the visitor center. It is situated on the Pencil Pine Creek. The track is a fully constructed boardwalk that guides you on a platform to view the waterfall. It is part of the Dove Canyon Circuit. The Dove Canyon Circuit is a grade three track with 5.3 kilometers in distance. We only later found out that the path continues to Kinvet Falls, which is located only a further 10 minutes up the walking track from Pencil Pine Falls. There is another waterfall, Pencil Pine Cascade, which is also on Pencil Pine Creek. It is right next to Pepper's Lodge and it is the start of an easy walk, the Enchanted Walk. The Enchanted Walk is a grade two walk and it is 1.1 kilometers and is suitable for all ages. This is a delightful short walk which gives you a taste of Cradle Mountain. It begins near the bridge crossing Pencil Pine Creek and wanders through magical mossy forests. There is a tunnel that mimics a wombat burrow along the track. It attracts a lot of children. If you are doing the enchanted walk at dusk or dawn, especially during the colder months, you might be lucky and spot a platypus. If not, I can guarantee you will see other wildlife. Now let's talk about the wildlife in Cradle Mountain. We saw so many wombats, echidnas, paddy melons and possums. Paddy melons, which are not to be mistaken as wallabies, are probably the most seen wildlife in Cradle Mountain. You can often see them on the side of the road, especially at night. Near Ronnie's Creek car park, where we started our walk to Marion's Lookout, we spotted many wombats on the grassland, and some were right next to the constructed walking track. We saw quite a few echidnas while walking along the trail near the wombat pool and at the Pepper's Log. On the second night, we even had a possum visiting our cabin. 
He was very cute and keen to come inside. A visit to the Tasmanian Devil Sanctuary at Cradle Mountain was not on our itinerary, but the big sign on the side of the road attracted us, especially the kids. We joined a two hour feeding tour at the sanctuary and learnt a lot about these cute creatures. Our guide was very knowledgeable. Not only the devils, there were also quolls at the sanctuary. If you don't know what they are, quolls are carnivorous marsupials native to Australia and New Guinea. They are primarily nocturnal and spend most of the day in a den. Aren't they cute? It was a great family experience. They have provided the link below to the website if you're interested in visiting. Now let's talk about accommodation at Cradle Mountain. Most accommodations are not built at the base of Cradle Mountain, but about six kilometers at the gate of the National Park. There are a range of options, depending on whether you're looking to be closer to the wilderness and experience a rustic vacation, or if you desire to feel pampered and enjoy some luxury. Pepper's Lodge is probably the best choice for luxury travelers. It is surrounded by lush forests and is the starting point for the Enchanted Walk one of the most popular short walks at Cradle Mountain. Fully experience the wilderness, of course, you can choose to camp at a caravan park, such as the Cradle Mountain Discovery Park, which is where we stay. We decided to have something in between and stayed in a family cabin at the Cradle Mountain Discovery Park. It has a lounge area and a kitchen with two bedrooms. The location is ideal and the staff were nice and professional. There is a little grocery shop at the entrance of the park while the prices are on the higher side, it provides a good range of food and the necessities such as shampoo, soap, jam, honey, juice, and of course, bread and milk. There is also meat products available such as ham and steak, even alcohol. We found it to be very convenient. Cradle Mountain with its dramatic natural landscapes is definitely the top place to visit in Tasmania. What is your experience at Cradle Mountain? Please share it with us by leaving a comment below. Here is the video about our next stop, Queenstown. Check it out and don't forget to also check out the other videos we have about our Tasmanian trip. Also, if you found this video useful or interesting, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.